Hello world, welcome to our daily magazine show here on Learn TV. She's Amy Boyd. And he's Adam Jackson. Ah, great intro, Amy. Great <laughs> to be presenting with you again today. <laughs> coming yeah, up. Oh, like... <laughs> oh, anyway, coming up in today's show, we've got some amazing segments, haven't we, Amy? We've got Ability Talk with Shiva coming up in just a moment. We've got our regular Humans of Microsoft slot with Laurent. We've got Azure Fun Bites with Jay, and we've got WinDevBox with Kayla, all coming up today. Um, and and Amy, um, you know, I know that we wanted to talk about something that's uh, happened recently. You want to talk about the Azure icon, right? I was going to say, and you're wearing the correct T-shirt for us to talk about this as well, because that icon is changing. It is. It's correct, incorrect, isn't it? It's now retro. So um, the Azure icon is the way that we represent Azure within um, like an architecture diagram and also inside the Azure portal. It's not the Azure logo. The logo is that thing at the bottom that says Microsoft Azure. But uh, this icon is what a lot of people see and they say Azure. But yeah, this T-shirt is now retro. So I'm thinking I'm going to have more made. But also, you know, there's always demand for retro stuff as well, isn't it? We've got our got our bits as well. So uh, you've got yours on display in the background. Oh, I've actually got two here, there. So there we go. Anyway, so that's- They're that's everywhere. That, that, they're, every, they're multiplying. <laughs> <laughs> These raccoons causing trouble. Uh, anyway, uh, you've got um, a wonderful um, piece of news about how mixed reality is really helping transform people's lives and helping them readjust to uh, the new normal that we find ourselves in. Yeah, I was going to say it was. Um, I always troll through news.microsoft.com uh, before our Hello World show on a Wednesday and just see what people have been up to. Now, this story was at the end of March, so it's not it's not um, sort of super fresh news, but it's well worth a read. So, an amazing um, company called Act Image uh, are a sort of app creators, and something they've been doing with Hololens is they've been uh, providing sort of. Uh, for autistic people to feel safe in the world, to improve motor skills, to really just be more comfortable um, in the sort of outside environment. And, you know, we've all been indoors. And so getting back outdoors, hopefully, um, will be quite exciting for us all, but also, you know, things that can help us along. And so one of the things that they've done is they've done some amazing stuff with like putting um people look down quite a lot and to make people sort of look up a little bit more and, and uh, front face people they've actually done like creative balloons that you have to like pop within the hololens environment and then you can like go ahead and um kind of get like uh gamify it to get like points for popping balloons and then it's meant to improve sort of your motor skills that is just one of so many things so go and check yeah, out that awesome. it's in the show notes at ak.ms slash hello world Amazing. So what have we got coming up first today, Amy? Up first is Ability Talk with Shiva. And today she's going to be showing us some really cool demos uh, in Microsoft Teams. So Shiva, over to you. Hey, Shiva. Are you there? Hey. So, hi, this is Shiva. I am a woman of mixed ethnicity, long brown hair, wearing a cream colored sweater right now. I'm in my office and I have a picture of my 15 year old, that's why right, 15 year old dog Benjamin right behind me. So Amy, I'm gonna be talking today about Microsoft Teams and how to use it best for helping people with all kinds of abilities use it properly. Microsoft Teams comes with many features to help you create Teams environment that is inclusive of users with different kinds of disabilities, including captioning of the video, real-time transcription of meetings, support for sign language interpreters, adaptive backgrounds, and in-meeting chats. Suppose you work as a Teams admin for a very large multinational organization and you want to ensure meetings and calls are all inclusive of users with different disabilities. So everyone should be able to participate and contribute in it. What you can do is to take advantage of several features, including captions and transcription to support accessibility in your team's environment. So now I will get started with a demo just to show you how to do that. Captions and transcriptions basically are text versions of words someone is speaking. So captions appear for users in sync with real-time audio without obstructing other visual aids like shared screens. 
Transcripts play for users in sync with audio for recorded meetings, and users can access transcripts separately from videos so they can digest the content in a manner that they prefer. So how do we enable live captions for meeting? Um, easy. Select the meeting policies in the Microsoft Teams Admin Center. Select the global org wide policy where you can enable live captions to disabled, but the user can override and then just turn on live captions in your meetings. Easy peasy. How to view transcripts through recorded meetings? Well, with Microsoft Teams, you can enable your users to record meetings, which allows auto generated transcriptions of the meetings conversation and all recordings are stored in Microsoft Streams. So how do you record it? Select the meeting policies, again, under global org wide default and set allow cloud recording to on. This will allow all of your users to record their meetings whenever they need it. And like you can see on the screen, you can just start, select the start recording option during the meetings and you should be good to go. When the meeting recording has finished, it will be available on Microsoft Stream. So all attendees will receive an email with the video link when it's finished processing. How do we view the transcripts? With cloud recording and transcription enabled, your users can generate automatic transcripts from recorded meetings in Microsoft Stream dashboard using these steps. Go to My Content Meetings. Next up, select the video to enable captions and transcripts by selecting update video details. In the details select section, select one of the supported languages to use for captioning and transcription. Here, I just selected English. In the options section, select auto-generate a caption file. Finally, once all of this magic is done, just select apply on the top dashboard. Now, once we've done all this magic behind the scenes, how do we make use of this live captioning. Well, I'm just going to open up one video here. And live captioning here is available for users to use. So what you can do is just simply go and select CC, which is in the bottom bar on the video when you're watching it. And a searchable transcript will be presented to you. So users can search the transcript to find keywords or phrases which are spoken during the video and jump to that specific point in the video by just typing into the search field at the top of the transcript and just select the result. Alternatively, if your users want to search for a word or phrase across all the videos that are available, well, then you can just search for it by using the search field at the top of Microsoft Stream. And then just select any result in the list, and it'll take you to the specified match point in each video. OK, now that we've done all of this magic, we will move on how to enable meetings for interpreters. Sign language interpreters likely do not work for your organization. So granting them access to your team's environment should be done in a way that is in line with your organization's compliance and security environment requirements. So I will be posting a link to the video of just how admins can do this in the show notes. Don't forget to check that out. Now, how do you admit sign language interpreters to meetings? Well, uh, you should allow either everyone to bypass the lobby or the organizer should plan to activate the meeting and admit the interpreter from the lobby several minutes before the meeting starts. Meeting organizers can actually go and select meeting options in the meeting invite to change this setting. So how do we do that magic? First of all, as an admin, you can control this using meeting options. This setting is labeled automatically admit people. So you have three different kinds of options over there, and you can just, according to a vendor, according to a guest, according to an in-company uh, you know, employee, whoever is going there on your meeting list, you can actually enable and set the policies just according to the list of your uh, invitees. As an admin, you also need to make sure that whenever there is video on call, your organization policies are set appropriately to allow interpreters and participants to share their video feed. How do we do that? Well, we can do that by ensuring allow IP video is set to on in your meeting policies. It's actually pretty straightforward. 
by default, Teams switches the live stream viewer to whoever is talking. So, you know, if I'm talking right now, it'll by default just focus on me. But Teams also provides the dynamic view. So, you know, for people who have different kinds of disabilities and who need uh, their interpreter right there on the screen, regardless of who is speaking, they need to view that person. For them, using the dynamic view is super, super helpful and very, very important as well. Now, with all this information, I want to take just these last few seconds to tell you that we will be continuing to learn how to better use Microsoft Teams for more inclusive interactions in a part two segment in the next episode, where we'll talk about how to enable background effects, translate messages, using the immersive reader, and all of that fun stuff. And that's it for me today. Back to you, Amy. Fabulous. Thank you so much for um, sharing all those tips and tricks. We spend so much time in Teams, so it's so important that we make sure everyone feels comfortable um, with us in Teams. So that's, uh, that's exciting. And also those upcoming segments. Absolutely brilliant. So thank you, Shiva. Um, Adam, you, you are very, very good, actually, with all the different settings in Teams, right? But was some of that new for you? It was actually, and it's always brilliant to see um, what we're doing widely. One of the um, one of the things about being in Microsoft is a lot of those decisions are made for you, and you know we often have a lot of things come first. But it's great to see when things are actually available for um, our customers to use um, and actually see it from their perspective as well. It's good to see also from what an IT professional would use and also what an end user would use as well. So uh, really appreciate that, and also through the lens of um, you know enabling everyone to use our products. It's uh, really great to see. Anyway, um, shall we move on? So for this week's Humans of Microsoft segment, Laurent Bunyong is talking to Betty Onyugi, and she is a technical program manager for Microsoft in Nairobi, Kenya. Let's run the video. Hello and welcome back to Humans of Microsoft. This is a segment where we welcome people from all over the world, people just like you and me, but they have one thing in common, they all work for Microsoft. And today I'm joined by Betty Ngugi from Nairobi, Kenya. Hello, hello, Betty, how are you? Hi, Lauren, how are you today? I'm doing very fine and I'm really happy to have you here. This is the first time that we have someone from Kenya. So without further ado, let me ask you, what would you say was a pivotal moment in your career? Wow, I think that's a good question. So my pivotal moment, I would say, is when I got my first internship after grad school at Oracle. And why it was pivotal, it's because this is where I discovered myself, like what I really would want to do going forward, because it gave me um, a match of technical with customer focus. And I would also want to give like a lot of credit to my manager then because he was really instrumental in helping shape my career. His name is Piot. He was a Polish, uh, he, he was Polish but living in Kenya. And he 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 actually took me and and gave me high impact, high visibility projects that exposed me to some of the technical skills that are required for the role that I have now. And that's why I discovered that I needed to be more closer to to be get to get more closer to the technical side because I was getting a lot of feedback from my customers. I was a technical sales. So I was getting a lot of feedback from my customers, but I didn't have the opportunity to impact their feedback in the product because I had to pass it over to like the product side. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I discovered, so what is the role that will give me a close edge on the engineering side and also on the customer side? And that's when I discovered the product manager or the program manager role, which I now hold now at Microsoft. So I would say Oracle is like the role that helped shape my career that I have now. Very interesting. And, and one thing recurring in this segment is a, the importance of having a good manager. So if you have a good yes. manager, this will help your career. And so if you could go back in time, you know, anytime mm -hmm. you want, what would you tell yourself to help you getting started? Wow, I think that's a good one as well. So. I think when I was in university, I worried a lot about the future and I would tell myself it will work out eventually. Mm -hmm. Just just work on your technical skills 
um, and it will work out. The second thing I would also tell myself is nurture your friendships. These will be the oh. networks that will connect you to your next role. And true to it, the people who actually help me are people who actually helped me get to the roles that I have now are people I shared a class with when I was mm -hmm. in uni. It wasn't the people that I met who are already in the industry, in the events mm -hmm. that I got into. So I would say nurture, nurture the friendships that you have now. They will help you, connect you to nice. your future. Yeah, That's very nice and the importance of, uh, of relationship and networking, right? Mm -hmm. So I hear that you work uh, closely with the ADC, which is the African Development Center. Can you tell me a few words about yes. it? So Africa Development Center is Microsoft Development Center in Africa. We have two centers, one in Nairobi, one in Lagos. Uh, the Nairobi one is growing really fast. It was launched in May 2019 and we just hit the 300 mark, I think, this week, which means we have over 300 engineers sitting in Nairobi. Wow. Um, and it's a huge, it's a huge um, investment by Microsoft in Africa and we love it, yeah. Wow, this is really interesting. So definitely a chance for people to check it out. And in fact, I've never been to Kenya, but I really want to go. So mm -hmm. what, what is interesting about Kenya and where should I go when I come visit? Wow, depends. Do you like the beach or the safari? Because we can give you a mix of both. <laughs> I like everything. I love the safari for sure, but I also do some diving. So the, the beach would be good as well. Okay, so I will tell you, maybe you can start with the parks. We have a park in Nairobi, like uh -huh. it is right in the capital city. We have Masai Mara, where we have, I think, is it the eighth wonder of the world where we have the migration, uh, oh, the wow. world peace migration. And then you can go to the beach, Mombasa, Diani, Lamu. Um, we have like a good mix at the coast as well. Yeah. Wow, this sounds absolutely amazing. So I'll make sure to try and come <laughs> visit you and definitely check out also the ADC, the Africa Development Center. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Betty, for taking your know, time off, out of your busy day for being with you. And thank you to all the watchers. Join us next time for another Humans of Microsoft. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good to be here. Wow, amazing to hear about um, the, the, the great work that the team at the Africa Development Center are doing and feeling very jealous of uh, all of the things that we've got in, in Kenya right now. Our weather is so terrible, isn't it, Amy? I know. I know, just noting down like future trip to yeah. <laughs> go, go do some <laughs> research. We've got that travel bug going again. Uh, but thank you so much, Laurent and Betty, for uh, putting together that segment for us. It's such a great session, but no time to stall in our Hello World show today. So it's on to uh, our next session, which is Jay with Azure Fun Bites. So Jay, thank you so much. As always, welcome back to the show. Hey, Amy, there's no time to waste today. We've got so much to cover and you know that I love to talk about what, what I'm going to be talking about next, which is Azure Fun Bites. I was going to say, and so Azure Fun Bites, when and where should people go to find this first off? Sure. So you can find Azure Fun Bites every single week on Thursdays, uh, right here on Learn TV. So when you finish watching Hello World tomorrow, you just stick around after Frank and Nitya and you, and you watch me uh, talk about uh, all these cool things that you can see uh, are, are available to you on, within Azure. Wonderful. And I love your gift for your show. It's so colourful and wonderful. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the topic of discussion. So what are you talking about this week? So this week, we're going to talk about, and, and it's a two-part series we're doing. So we're doing the first part today. It's going to, uh, next tomorrow, I should say, it's an intro to Azure Data Factory. And Azure Data Factory is Azure's cloud ETL service for scale-out serverless data integration and data transformation. So we can actually do things like code trans, uh, I should say code-free uh, data movements between uh, our original data source. And, and for those of you who may not know what an ETL is it's extract, transform, and load. So it's how we bring data from, say, one source into a data warehouse so we can actually do some more things with it. Nice, nice. Two part series, very good. Love so Data Factory cover. as well. I know, I know. Well, you just mentioned two parts, right? Integration and all of the um, sort of uh, transformation that's done. I think a lot of people think of big data, they only think of the transformation. Actually, where's all this data coming from? The integration is so yeah. important. 
Azure Data Factory is great for that, right? You, you always bring us a demo. Have you brought us a demo? Uh, yeah, I've got a little something. So um, obviously, like I said, it's a code-free ETL as a service. So we're actually doing our data migration uh, from one data source to the other without necessarily worrying about writing some code to do it. And so uh, what I did, Amy, uh, is I just put together um, a quick uh, text document uh, with just first name, last name, and then a couple of names, John and Jane, a great couple, uh, very nice people. Um, and, and as you can see, I stored it as a, a blob in a, a blob storage container. And so what I've done is I created a data factory. And what uh, data factory allows you to do is to kind of use a next, next, last methodology of, of actually setting up your ETL. So if I click ingest and then go over, I can uh, select the data source. And so there are all these available data sources, Amy, whether we're using Azure database for MySQL, Azure SQL, table storage, but I am specifically today, I'm gonna to be using that blob. So I'm gonna go into Azure blob storage. And uh, what I can do is then configure everything to start uh, allowing me to have different link services. So I've got two different link services. One is the actual source, which is the blob storage and our target that I've linked as well. I, I kind of had to fast forward and, and we're gonna kind of keep it fast because we only got a minute and plus left uh, is, is the Azure SQL database. And so what I did was I went ahead and I just provided data sources, provided the mappings between the data uh, in, in the blob uh, text file and then into SQL. And then eventually it finishes, we go through the pipeline run, that pipeline run eventually allows me to uh, see that my data has been imported. So you can see John and Jane, they're in that query that I just ran. Um, so all of our data has moved over. Well, well, I gave you like this, the, the simplest version of this. Uh, and and my, my guest, you know I always have a guest, Amy. Always, always. Talk to us, who's, who's Mark? We can see him here. Mark Cromer, he's a principal program manager for the Data Factory team. He's going to help me learn everything I can in just 60 minutes about it. And, and that 60 minutes, if you want to find out when and where it is, well, I even added this time around BST, 11 a.m. PT, 2 p.m. ET, 7 p.m. all the way in the UK. Um, you can find out more information on twitter.com slash Azure Fun Bites. And you can also watch it right here, like I said before, live on Learn TV. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jay. As always, um, you've really set us up for some excitement for Azure Fun Bites tomorrow. Adam, ETL, is it your thing? Will you be it there? It, it will be my thing once I've watched it tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it, 7 p.m. BST. Thank you for always providing the time zone conversion, Jay. Um, anyway, um, with uh, no further ado, because we are running short on time today, um, let's go over to our regular WinDev Mock segment with Kayla. Hi, Kayla, how's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, not bad, thank you. What have you got to talk to us about today? So today I have a bunch of Windows Terminal tips and tricks. So a bunch of things that you might not have known you could do in Terminal. So of course, Windows Terminal now ships inside Windows. Um, it's a huge milestone for us and it's currently in the Windows Insider program build. So it'll eventually roll out to all of retail. Um, and if you don't, if you're not on a Windows version that has Terminal installed, you can always download it from the Microsoft Store. So without further ado, let's get into these tips and tricks. So the first tip is that you can use search inside terminal. So if you type control shift F, you'll get the uh, search box on the top right. So you can search for any keyword in there. So instead of hitting up like 30 times to find the command that you ran before, you can search for the command instead, which is, is a whole lot easier to do. <laughs> um, and the second tip we have is also another pop-up that you can get with control shift P, which is the same as in VS code, and you can open the command palette. So the command palette will list every command that's currently available in terminal. So I, in this demo, I just scroll down and find, use the same find command to open that search box a different way. So that's another way that you can move around terminal and use a bunch of different commands and actions inside terminal, which is really cool. Oh, so quick question on that. So can I create a custom command and then have that appear in the command palette? 
Yeah, you uh, you read my mind. So actually, in the next slide, I show how to do a custom command as well. So I've made one that's just called open my dev configuration. Yeah, right there, open development config. And I have a little lightning bolt icon as well, so I, I could see it. And this will just open a bunch of panes to get me started right away into the config that I'll use for my development. Um, and actually, one of my developers, he made one as well, and it's called Good Morning. So in the morning, he'll go in and type Good Morning into the command palette, and it'll open his <laughs> dev config as well. I was like, that's so clever. Mine's like just boring of like open development config. But anyway, <laughs> I thought that was really cute. Um, and of course, the last tip that I have is if you didn't already make a custom command, you can also open panes really easily by opening the drop down and holding alt. And then this will, whichever profile you click on, it will open a new pane of that profile. So here I'm just opening the Ubuntu profile here. So that's another way to get really uh, set up really quickly with your terminal. And if you hold shift, you can get a new window instead of a new pane after you click on a profile too. So that's just how you can quickly open profiles and search for things and command palette and all this stuff that's not too obvious uh, when you first get terminal, which is cool. I love it. Love all the shortcuts. Um, and I have to say, I love the dark brushed chrome look that you've got in the terminal there as well. Is that something that you found online? Um, no. So usually I go to uh, like Windows themes and just use a Windows theme and then I have a bunch of profiles with related themed backgrounds. But this one, I just binged um, metal brush backgrounds. And um, I was inspired from the build video when we announced Terminal two years ago, because it looks kind of chrome and, and metal glass-like. Um, and build is coming up in a couple weeks now. So I'm like reminiscing back to when we announced Terminal with that video. Um, so I just looked up a bunch of different colors of metal and things. And that's kind of where that came from. <laughs> Love it. And you've got some resources to share as well. So if anyone wants to check out all of the things that you just demoed. Yeah, so if you want to install Terminal or Terminal Preview from the Microsoft Store, you can go to aka.ms slash terminal or slash terminal dash preview. And then if you want to go to our doc site, there's a ton of information on all the settings or actions, customizations, tips and tricks. Those are all there on aka.ms slash terminal dash docs. And our GitHub is at github.com slash Microsoft slash terminal. And of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter at cinnamon underscore MSFT. Amazing. I love it. Thank you, Kayla, so much. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So um, I think we're going to bring Amy back on now because we're almost out of time. I know, right? Gosh, it's been such a jam-packed show. So let's do a quick recap. Re oh, I can't even get my words out. Recap <laughs> on all of the things that we've covered. I'm just too excited to tell you. So first up, we had um, the Ability Talk with Shiva, where she talked through some amazing tips and tricks uh, for being super inclusive in Teams. If you want to check that out, remember, you can always watch this on demand as well to rewatch and go click in yourself. Afterwards, we had Humans of Microsoft with Laurent and Betty, where they talked a bit about all the amazing stuff that's happening in Nairobi where Betty is. So if you want to find out more, check it out. Um, then we had Azure Fun Bites with Jay, where he spoke about Data Factory and the exciting people he has coming up on his show tomorrow. And then last but never least on this show, uh, we had Windev Box with Kayla and her wonderful customized backgrounds inspired by Build. Wow, that's amazing. And thank you again to all of the all of the presenters that we had on today. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. We've got Frank and Nitya here with tomorrow's Hello World. And that's the same time, same place here on Learn TV. But for now, a final thank you. Oh, yes, yes. Hello, aka.ms slash hello world. Hello world. Please go to this. All of the notes from today are on there. Um, and stick with us here on Learn TV for the launch space, which is coming up covering AKS on Azure Stack HCI. Do not touch that button. Stay with us. But bye for now. Bye. Bye.